Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I found this little laptop online a few days ago and what's unusual about it compared to others that we've tested before is that it's custom built. The only branding I could find on it was a crumpled old G Fuel sticker on the lid and because I'm not keen to start I peeled it off. Seriously though, I thought there might be a logo underneath but nothing. So what's its story and more importantly what's inside? Well the search for details began on the bottom where I found the digits MS1492. A quick Google search revealed that this machine was also known as the Skyfire 4 and it released around late 2014, early 2015. It was fully customisable from a company known as PC Specialist and using the Wayback machine we can visit the old webpage and even configure it as was possible back then. Unfortunately I can't access the price page but if you wanted a Pentium CPU Prices started at £590. This user states that they got theirs with an i5 for £553, so maybe there was a sale at some point. Nonetheless, this one cost me just over £200 today, and after a visit to Device Manager, it seems we have the i5 model with a GTX 850M graphics card, the same featured in this review. I'm actually pretty happy about this because the 850M was quite a popular choice in older gaming laptops, and I don't think we've ever checked out its performance before. Plus, with plenty of cheap used options available on eBay that feature this mobile GPU, it seems like a good idea. Now, testing laptop graphics a little different from desktop variants because of the different processors in the wide variety of models available. The 850M has been paired with a vast array of CPUs over the last few years. You could argue though that this is more representative of a real world scenario, but without dwelling on it too much, let's take a quick peek at the graphics specs. So the 850M is based on the Maxwell architecture, supports DirectX 12, and comes in either a GDDR5 or DDR3 variant. We've got the 2GB GDDR5 version here, which despite being clocked lower, outperforms the DDR3 model and actually outpaces the 860M in some scenarios. I'll be exploring upgrade options in another video as I need to open this thing up anyway to clean it, but in today's one I thought we'd see how it performs as is, without any changes being made. How well do the i5-4210M, 8 gigs of single channel DDR3 RAM and a GTX 850M perform together in games? Well let's find out. So in Cinebench R15, first of all, you can see that we have fair performance. It's about 50 points behind the newer i5-7200U that I tested in a laptop the other day, but feels just as snappy in everyday tasks. This is also a two-core, four-threaded component. Jumping into the games and all I had to do was double-click the .exe file before the fans fired up and started producing the traditional jet engine noise as seen with other machines. I dug out an old laptop cooling pad that used to stop my Toshiba catching fire back in the day and this calmed things down a little bit, but even so it was getting toasty in here. Luckily, it's a pretty cool day today so the ambient temperature is quite mild. Who knows how much that really helps though. So I started off with Battlefield 5 and while it is a shame that in some games the processor holds this graphics card back a little bit, this isn't the case with all of today's tested titles. In fact in some situations these two, the CPU and the GPU, seem quite evenly matched. Battlefield 5 though was playable for the most part at 720p low, though there will be a few frame drops here and there. Now Bioshock Infinite was one of the examples whereby the graphics card was actually maxing out at 100% usage and our CPU wasn't really having to work that hard. This is of course an older game though. Now here we were running the title at 900p, the laptop's native screen resolution, with the medium preset and the frame rate limiter off. Overall, things felt a little bit stuttery, perhaps due to those 1% and 0.1% low figures, but all in all, it was an okay experience. Bear in mind that when combat heats up a little bit, you will start to see a few frame drops here and there, and that could hinder your overall gameplay experience. I think locking the game to either 60 or 30 FPS would be your best bet here, so that you don't notice those frame drops as much. Now Far Cry New Dawn actually surprised me, we ran the in-game benchmark test, 720p with the low settings and any forms of anti-aliasing turned off, and we saw 41 frames per second on average. Now this is acceptable, 
in my opinion on this laptop. The lower resolution on this 14 inch screen isn't as noticeable as it would be on say a desktop PC with a bigger monitor. So I think if you want to play at this resolution to maximize your frame rate then go right ahead because the experience is an okay one providing you don't mind less than 60 frames per second of course. Now in Fortnite the game actually auto selected the high settings at 900p but I dropped things to medium just to ensure we were hitting 60 frames per second. Even so both of the components the CPU and GPU here seemed fairly evenly matched and we were achieving at least 60 frames per second on average almost all of the time. Again there will be a few drops here and there but Fortnite is a pretty decent experience at 900p with this system. Finally. It's old, but it's gold. It's Skyrim Special Edition, the remastered version of the 2011 game, and one that still holds up very nicely today. I'm still discovering things I never noticed in my first four playthroughs, so that's a bonus. Now, this will run absolutely wonderfully with the high settings preset and anti-aliasing turned way up on this system. If you want to hit a solid 60 frames per second, then I would say either play the original version of the game, or turn the settings down to medium or low. Feel free to keep 900p. Overall, it was quite a surprising experience, but I do look forward to, as I say, testing the GTX 850M with something a little bit more powerful later down the line to see what it can really do. We'll explore those options and more when I clean this laptop up a little bit, because I'm sure it's collected quite a bit of dust over the years. But I hope you enjoyed this initial look at the PC specialist Skyfire 4. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy this video, leave a like on it down below. Leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one where we'll be trying to game on a thin client of all things.